And we are live. Welcome, mystery and thriller fans. I am your on-air mystery maven host, Sarah Devello, and I am thrilled to host USA Today best-selling author, Emily Richards, here to tell us about her brand new book, The House Guests. Emily, welcome. Tell us about your book. Oh, well, thank you for having me, Sarah. This is such a nice thing to do. Um, the book came out today. Sorry. That was my my speaker, so sorry about that. Okay, okay, we're having speaker problems here. Yeah, the book came out today, so this is book birthday, and yeah, that's how I felt. Um, and <laughs> as you as you know, I wrote it during the pandemic, or I finished it during the pandemic, and even had to change some of the dates in the book so that my poor characters weren't living through the pandemic. <laughs> Because it ended, theoretically, right about the time the pandemic began, and I just couldn't have that. So, yeah, so it's been my pandemic book, but it doesn't have anything to do with pandemic. It's really just more fun than that. <laughs> anything is more fun than that. But Great. So, how would you describe your book in, uh, in an elevator to a stranger? Well, it's a little bit suspense, a little bit women's fiction, a little bit friendship novel. It's really about the the turmoil of two different families who are brought together. Uh, neither of them are excited about being brought together, but they are, and they muddle through together, um, and they both have issues that are happening, and they end up helping each other. Um, it was just a lot of fun to work, a lot of fun to write. I loved all the characters. Yay. Yay! Perfect. Well, I just want to welcome all of our friends on Facebook and on YouTube. Welcome to our friends in the Mystery and Thriller Mavens Facebook group. Welcome to our Murder by the Book fans. Welcome to my friends and fans. So great to have you all here. If you've been here before, you know how this works. And if you're new, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Here's how it works. Every week, I give you two featured authors. And I have 10 picks and you get to ask them anything. So ask Emily about her book. Ask her about her writing process. Ask her about her cover. Ask her about her title. Ask her about anything you want to know. And I will get you those answers. Anissa is saying hello from South Carolina. Welcome. Anissa, welcome back. Top community member there. Good to see you. Gail, welcome. She is saying happy pub day. Emily. Oh, thank you. Thank Yay. you. Now, Emily, this book is racking up great praise. The New York Journal of Books says this engrossing, suspenseful novel encompasses the trials of two very different families who come together, demonstrating the meaning of family is not just determined by blood ties. This is a compelling page turner, one you won't want to put down. Amazing praise there. I like it. The word compelling is always good for an author. We we like that word. <laughs> that's what we're striving for. Yeah, we, we strive for compelling. You know, the, that's what we like to hear. Um, so congratulations on that rave review. Leslie is saying hello from Canada. Ooh. Leslie, top community member there. Welcome. Making us international. Welcome, Leslie. Great to have you back. Always great to have you. Um, so tell us, Emily, as a USA Today bestselling author who loves to be known as compelling. How do you make a book compelling? How do you do it? Well, I don't know. I've written 80 books and, you know, it's different with each book. And I'm not sure what I do that makes them compelling, but I certainly strive for that. And each book is a little different. So sometimes it's characters and sometimes it's a story. Sometimes it's a setting. And that was one of the compelling things I think about the house guests is that I set it in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Um, which I had visited on a school field trip when I was in third grade. That's how much I remembered it. Yeah, <laughs> that was a while ago, you can tell. Uh, and I and I just, I knew that that, I wanted to use that as the setting for this book. And I wanted to use the Greek culture in town as a background for the story. Um, so I got to visit several times and do research right up until the time we couldn't visit anymore. Um, but I did have that experience. I got to go to their epiphany service in 2020, which was amazing, a truly wonderful. I spent three days there um, enjoying that experience and taking notes. So, you know, um, I think that's one of the compelling things in this book. 
Now, yeah. is, uh, now, Tarpon Springs, I happen to know because my aunt in Philadelphia, my aunt Joan, my best friend, she loves these natural springs that run through Florida. So they're actually like geysers, these this beautiful, pure spring water just geysers up out of the earth. Tarpon Springs, is I happen to know, is one of those, which is a weird fact. I don't know why I know that, except she did this tour of these springs through Florida. Um. And Tarpon Springs, as you said, is a, is a, is a, an, a very, uh, has a very large Greek community. And she was telling me that one of the things they do is um, they throw a little figurine of the baby Jesus in, and then all of the young men in the village jump in and they dive for the baby Jesus figure. Were you there for that? I was there. And actually, it's a cross that they threw in. Oh, cross. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, the archbishop threw the cross in, and there were all these boys. We had a lot of boys the doing diamond. it. And yeah, they, they walked to the church barefoot first, and then they walked from the church barefoot to the water where they, um, Spring Bayou, where they throw the cross. It's a very big deal, and it's been, it's really important to the families to have their sons involved and they they pick only the best boys the boys that are that they really feel are um that are that are part of the church and part of the community and you get students and um so it's and and then the boys all are very um they're very helpful to each other and they're very supportive of each other even if they're not the ones to get the cross so it was really a neat thing to see yeah and I actually saw something similar in Greece. It was interesting at for Orthodox Orthodox Easter in Greece on the island of Idra. And I probably did not pronounce that right. But um, they did a very similar thing. So it's really a tradition in Greek culture. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Leslie is saying that she is Greek and Greek and she loved Tarpon Springs. She visited a few years ago, so unique and loved the sponge diving. Yeah, this it's, that's what it's famous for is the sponge divers. That they, they settled that area where the, there was a little town there, and then they brought in the sponge divers from from Greek islands and the Dodecanese Islands because they have this huge natural sponge bed. And that's how the Greeks settled in and have stayed. It's a very large, still a very large Greek community. And you will hear Greek spoken in the in the on the streets when you're walking around. It's really neat. Very cool. I've never been to Carpen Springs, but I have been to Greece. I loved it. Leslie, I should have recognized that your name, Marquitas, is of course. Marquitas, yes. So for sure. Welcome and so good to have you. And Emily, I also was in Idra, which is one of the islands off of Greece, and Ehina. So there's a Oh my God, Greece is amazing. I think it may be my favorite country in Europe. I love Greece. It's a wonderful place to visit. It really is. Yeah. Anissa is saying happy pup day. Oh, thank you, Anissa. Thank you. Oh, Catherine is saying she's saying hello from New Zealand. <laughs> hey, Catherine. Them. Catherine's a friend online. Oh, so glad to have you here. Yay. And you're getting so many hearts up on Facebook. Yay. Opa. All right. Wonderful, Catherine, making us even more international watching from New Zealand. My goodness, it must be what, six o'clock in the morning there? So good of you to get up early and have us and join us, Catherine. Thank you. Um, and she's also saying she loved this Greek, this Greek theme. So Emily, maybe you should put together a Greek tasting menu to go with the book. <laughs> I actually have, I have posted some Greek recipes on my blog because I make Greek food at home. I'm not an accomplished Greek cook, but I love to make traditional Greek dishes when I can. And eat them. <laughs> I love I eating them. I could eat Greek food every single day of my life. Okay, great question from Anissa. She said, Emily, who was your hardest character to write and why? Love that question, Anissa. Probably Yaya, the who is runs the restaurant, Yaya's Cuisine. She's one of the main character, Cassie's grandmother. And I'd say she was the hardest to write because it's it's hard to write a character from another country, even though she's been in the U.S. most of her life. Um, without resorting to stereotypes, you have to be so careful. Um, so I had to really think about her language and the way that she would look at the world and the problems she had in her family. Um, she's she's really a joy in the book, though. She's a breath of fresh air every time she she wanders in. Yay! So, so <laughs> your favorite? Oh, I don't know. You know, the, the your favorite character is when you're writing at the moment. I loved writing the teenagers, Will and Savannah. Savannah was so bad. I have four children, and I remember those teenage years well. <laughs> so I got to pull out the stops on that. It was really fun. Oh my gosh, I love it. Oh, Michelle is saying hello from British Columbia, Canada. Even more international. Michelle, welcome. Great to have you. Have two Canadians with us today. Fabulous. That's great. Neighbors to the North. Thanks for joining us. 
Um, so Savannah was, so Savannah, would you say is the most fun to write, even though she's so bad? Um, yeah, probably. Cause you know, you never know what she's going to say and I never knew what she was going to say. And she sometimes surprised me, which is always fun for an author <laughs> when you're surprised by your characters. Oh my gosh. I love it. That's so fun. Well, um, so some other amazing praise that your book has earned is a, from library journal, which awarded it a starred review. Congratulations on that. Thank really. you. Thank you. Fans of suspense. Uh, suspenseful domestic drama will love Richards's tale of secrets, lies, and the ties that bind. Uh, so fabulous praise from, from the Library Journal. And again, a starred review. Publishers Weekly also gave you a rave saying the carefully constructed entwining of Cass Cassie and Amber's stories offers some genuine surprises. This is pure soap opera of the best sort. Congratulations on that. Thank Catherine, you. Catherine would like to know, did you have a favorite event um, in the book? She said mine had to do with the fish. Yeah. What's your favorite scene in the book, Emily? Well, probably the Epiphany celebration, just because I was there in real life and got to see it. So that made it special for me, I think. Um, and so writing it was fun and brought back the memories of wandering through the town and, and being part of that. Um, so, yeah, I would say that was probably my favorite. Very cool. So, your favorite one had to do with the first. Well, I'm getting a little feedback there. I don't know why that's happening. Um, hopefully that will pass. Um, Emily, one thing that I really loved is in the acknowledgments, which I always read, I love to read the acknowledgments, you very graciously thank people that often don't get a lot of thanks, that don't get a lot of acknowledgement. Um, and I really love that you did that, including your cover designer. And you said that you really appreciated her, Gigi Lau, because she understands so well what your books are about and the art that best represents them. So let's talk about this art. What do you okay. think about it. Well, you know, um, I've had some real for some really bad covers. I'll confess. I, every author can say the same thing if they've written enough books. Um, Gigi has done the last three or four of my covers, and she really takes time and effort to find out what the story is about and to find appropriate photography to use or to do photo shoots. She's had to do photo shoots for two of my books, and that's really been fun because. They've let me pick out the models. They've let me pick out what they're wearing. They've let me pick out scenery that is appropriate for my story. Um, but for this book and the one right before it, A Family of Strangers, um, Gigi just got it right at the beginning. And she had artwork and photography that was exactly what we needed to jump off with. So we really didn't have to do a photo shoot because it was so appropriate. And so I, I am thankful to her for taking the time and, and using her creative energy in that way. So this was the first draft and she just got it right on the first try. She did. And she did with the last one, too. She sent me a photograph and said, do you like what is it you like about this photograph? And I said, put it on the cover. It's perfect. <laughs> Everything was perfect. about it. it was really a scene for the book, which she had never read. It was just ideal. So sometimes that happens if you're lucky. Now, tell us the story of the title. Did that come to you right away? No. Well, that was not the original title. Um, what was the original title? The original title was Lies and Other Mercies, and uh, which we all liked. But at one point, right about the time they were going to finalize the cover, someone on the marketing team said, you know, I think it sounds like a collection of short stories. And we all went, ooh, you know, that's not good. So we batted around a lot of ideas. But my, um, my editor, Emily Ohanjanians, uh, was the one who came up with this title. And I, I I liked it right away. We we fiddled around with it. But in the end, that was the one we went with because we thought it had, they had done, so, it had done such a good job of explaining what the book was really about. It's tantalizing, I think, uh, and suspenseful enough. Who are these people? And then we added, be careful who crosses your threshold at the bottom mm -hmm. um, to, to make sure people got that this was going to be a suspenseful read. And I think the cover looks suspenseful too. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. I'm trying to hold it very still so I don't make anybody seasick. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, what do you think is the key to writing suspenseful fiction? How do you keep those pages turning? Well, I think you have to just, uh, you have to turn your story out a little at a time. You have to make sure that people are interested, 
but they don't have all the answers. You have to dole out the truth of the story a little bit at a time. And I, and I, I think, I mean, that's the trick for any kind of, really, it doesn't have to be suspense, any kind of novel. But in suspense, you've got the whole mystery or suspenseful thriller elements that you have to dole out too. And that makes it, you know, that that's hard to do as, a, as an author. You've really got to be careful because you don't want people to figure things out too soon, but you want to give them enough information that when they do figure out, they go, you know, I should have, I should have seen that coming there. It was all there and I just didn't put it together. That's what you hope for. Exactly. Because as a reader and as a writer, I don't want to figure it out on page two and be like, oh, now I got to slog through the next 300 pages. But I don't want to get to the page 300 and be like, there was a butler? What butler? I never saw a butler. You know? <laughs> I've had that happen. I've had that happen when I'm reading. And it's like, oh, please, you didn't set this. I am sometimes on TV, too. They'll just pull the, you know, they'll pull the bad guy out of a hat, like a rabbit out of a hat. And it's like, well, he hasn't been in here. Where is it? Who is this person? Why is, Why did he do this? Yeah. So yeah, you try to avoid that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, Diane Chamberlain, New York Times bestselling author of The Dream Daughter said, I love settling down with a book by Emily Richards, knowing I can turn myself over to her for a story that's both infinitely readable and emotionally deep. Why, how do you think like, what is the key to writing something that is emotionally deep? How do you go deep and do it right? Well, you write too long. <laughs> you write too many right. pages. <laughs> no, you really have to think about it. I mean, I worked in a mental health center as a yeah, doing counseling before I started writing. I worked for Head Start uh, as a coordinator. And I think you just, and I'm, and I'm a minister's wife, and churches are a microcosm of the world. So the people that you meet in churches and in these situations, um, you really get to know them. If you're interested in people, you want to know what makes them tick. Um, not because you plan to write it down, but just because you want to get to know that person. And, um, and and then you try to set, add some of those elements into your writing when you, do, when you actually do settle down to write. Mm. Book list made mention of um, actually in another book of yours, The Family of Strangers, said Richards definitely shifts from women's fiction into domestic suspense. What made you want to make that shift? You know, I am not sure. I think that there's been suspense in a lot of my books. Um, so, and I want to, even when I wrote, started out writing romance, I had, I, I wrote romantic suspense. So some of my novels were classified as romantic suspense. So I've always done suspense. It's just that these stories lended, lent themselves to more complicated suspense plots um, with really some thriller elements, this one in particular. So um, it, it was, it wasn't that I sat down to do something different. It was just that that was the story I wanted to tell. And so that's how that happened. Oh, I love that. I love that. Leslie would like to know, how do your characters come to you? Do you just see them and know them? Do you develop them complete with their history? Um, great question. How they are. Happen? They are great questions. And I like to, it doesn't always work. And it didn't work for this book, actually. But I like to sit down in the character as if I am the character telling about my life. So I'm in their head and I'm right, telling about their life um, instead of writing a, a, a social service kind of report. I want to be that person and find out how they feel about what's happening and what has happened to them. Um, I wrote one of these for uh, two of the characters, the two main characters in the book, Amber and Cassie. And the one for Cassie got tossed because that just wasn't who she that wasn't who the person in the book turned out to be. At all, I made a lot of changes as I wrote this book, which is unusual for me. But um, more things, uh, yeah, I, I changed. I, people died. People were resurrected. <laughs> I they had new new jobs, <laughs> um, and so the the Greek restaurant wasn't in the first draft of, or at least the first uh, draft of my proposal. Um, I just made a lot of changes until it felt right, um, and that's part of de developing a character is when that person feels right. You know, you know, you've gotten where you need to go. How many drafts has it? Well, the actual writing was, well, you know, that's always hard to say because I go back, unlike all the advice telling you not to go back and make changes as you write, uh, I could never write that way. I have to go back and get it right before I move on. So, um, so I'm constantly editing, constantly going back. 
But I do one full draft with that, going back and editing. And then I sit down with it and read it silently and make, in fact, I put it on my Kindle is what I do. Um, and then I, I just make notes um, to myself that something has to be fixed. Uh, and then when I've gone back and made all those changes, then I do an out loud read through. Um, I read the whole book out loud and um, make a lot of changes at that point. So that's three complete drafts that, that change from draft to draft. But in, in between, there's all, all kinds of, and I, I'm one of these people that does outline in the beginning. I really feel like I need to outline. I, I don't want to come to the computer in the morning and not know what I'm going to write about. It doesn't mean the changes don't happen, but it just means that when I sit down, I have, a, I have something to go on. Um, and that's fun. How long did it take you to do that whole process of the three full drafts, writing it, going back over it, putting on your Kindle, reading it, making notes to yourself, then reading it aloud, making more notes to yourself, those three complete revisions? I'd say that was about nine months, but there was many months before that where I was trying to get the proposal right. And I, it just wasn't satisfactory to me. My editor had problems with it. My brainstorming group. Um <laughs> <laughs> they had problems with it too. Uh, one, one of my brainstorming friends says, I hope you're going to get to the story pretty soon because this is really boring. <laughs> and I went, you know, I know it is. That's why I'm here. Let's fix it. Uh, so we, we worked on it. And that was helpful. And then I went back and made a million more changes. But then when I finally sat down with the proposal, I knew I had what I wanted to do. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you're getting, people are laughing, laughing, laughing with this, uh, this brainstorming group and the brutal feedback. Who, who, is, who is in this brutal brainstorming group? Oh, they are brutal. They're fabulous. They're so good. This was funny because she knew I knew that I was unhappy with it. So, but Casey Daniels, Kylie Logan, who's the mystery writer and, and has written under several names. And then uh, Shelly, um, Shelly Costa, uh, who also writes a Stephanie... Oh, I'm blanking. Uh, and then there's Serena B. Miller, who writes um, Christian fiction. We all write different things. Two mystery, straight mystery writers and me and I write kind of all over the board. And then there's Serena, who writes inspirational fiction. So uh, but it doesn't matter because they're all really trustworthy. They're all really good plotters. Um, they have different kinds of ideas. We, we bring different things to the mix and we're just good friends. So we hang out. I'm, in fact, you can see I'm in my summer cottage right now. Um, I'm supposed to be sitting in front of some windows and my computer wouldn't work in there for some strange reason. But um, uh, so they come up here and spend about five days with me um, and we and we do two brainstorming sessions for each of us. Uh, and it can be a, something as simple as I can't think of a title of a book. Let's work on that. Or it can be here's an idea. Let's plot the story. Um, you can, you know, it's just whatever somebody needs. How many, first of all, okay, so many questions. How did you meet this brainstorming group? How did you get it? How did you come together and decide to work together? Well, uh, Casey Daniels, Kylie Logan, she's many people. Um, and the, by the way, it's Stephanie Cole is a Shelly Casas, but um, that we are friends and we were in another brainstorming group together um, with uh, Diane Mott Davidson and Jasmine Cresswell and, um, and Karen Young. Uh, but they, they all sort of retired from, from writing. So Casey and I went looking for a new group and she brought in, I brought in Serena, who was a, a friend I had met at a, a West Virginia conference. And then she brought in a Shelly who lives in Cleveland um, where I used to live. Um, with with Casey so we and we just the first time we just clicked it was great so we've been together for for years now very good Catherine is saying her wedding quilt I'm not sure if that's happening sorry is lovely it's behind me there you get a better look of it it's on the bed behind me this is a guest room quasi study that I use where I, where I write. It is a beautiful, it's a handmade wedding ring quilt. I would love to say I wrote, I did it, but I did not do it. <laughs> I did buy it though. So I picked it out. <laughs> wow. Good eye, Catherine. Um, I'm sorry. Catherine is a, Catherine is a quilter. 
Catherine is a quilter, clearly. All right, guys, we have five minutes left, which means it's time for the lightning round. So whatever questions you have for Emily, get them going in the comments. I'll get them right over to her. Anything you're wondering about her quilt, her book, her characters, her ready presses, her brutal yet lovely brainstorming group, get them going because we got a few minutes more. We can probably take two or three more questions. Um, I will kick off. Emily, what is one thing you want us to walk away from this book, having learned, having felt, having experienced? How important it is to accept other people, not for how they look or what you think about them to begin with, but um, for what they can actually bring to your life if you let them. Oh, I love that. I love that. Thank you for that. Um, that's a real, that's such, oh, you're getting hearts up on Facebook. Thank you guys. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's Yay. nice. That's such an important, um, an important, important message. Emily, what are you reading right now? Um, boy, I just finished, um, let's see, what did I just finish? Um, hmm. Oh, I just finished uh, Louise Erdrich's The Night Watchman. And um, I also finished... Well, that's what that's the one that just leaps to mind right now. I'm in the middle of trying to I have a lot of books loaded on my Kindle and I'm in the middle of trying to figure out which one I want to read. I started one that was a little depressing and I thought I'm not ready for that right now. <laughs> so I was I, I'm now I'm now looking through my Kindle to decide what to. Oh, and I also read. Um, oh, boy. Oh, uh, The Last Bookshop in London. I just finished that, too. Yeah. Ooh, fabulous. fabulous. Thank you. Um, Emily, let me ask you, what, uh, what are you working on next? Well, I'm working on, a, I did a series, and this is what Catherine is referring to by the quilts, um, a Shenandoah album series about uh, women in the Shenandoah Valley and the quilts that connect them. Um, I'm a quilter, and each, the quilts are used in different ways in the books. And the first one is called Wedding Ring, which is why I have the Wedding Ring quilt here. But, but I'm working on a collection of novellas uh, about women in, in the novels who were not featured as they were secondary characters. Um, and this is their stories. Uh, and I'm doing that myself. I'm going to independently publish that one because those books have come and gone with my publisher. And this is, this is an edition that I think my readers have been asking for more of these um, characters. So this is for them. This is for my readers. Based, Based on, on the flood of hearts that is just streaming on Facebook, I would say that this is indeed what your readers want. Yeah. They all they all say that they all want the more wedding, more of the Shenandoah album books. Yeah. Yay. Well, thank you for the great question, Leslie from Canada. Um, that would love, we were very happy to get to hear what Emily is working on now. And I just want to remember that, uh, remind everyone that today is Emily's pub day. Happy Yay. book birthday. I feel like she's wearing a little pointed hat. And yeah, see I Emily should have. Happy birthday, pub day. Pub day. <laughs> Um, and I just popped it in the link, pop the link in the comments. Y'all can get a copy of Emily's book today from Murder by the Book. Read this blazing new book, which is Drawing Comparisons to Celeste Ings, uh, Little Fires Everywhere. Um, you can also get all of Emily's backlist um, from Murder by the Book today. So the, the link is right there in the comments. Leslie is saying thank you for the great chat. Oh. She can't wait to read it. Leslie, thanks so much for joining us. Yes, from, Leslie, thank you. From Canada. Thank you to everyone who's joining us from every from all around the country and all around the world. New Zealand, too, in Canada. We got people in Boston. We got them all over the country. It's great to have you. And, of course, in Texas. Um United by our love of suspense, domestic, uh, domestic suspense, mysteries and thrillers. Yay, the best. Um, well, I just want to thank you, Emily Richards, USA Today best-selling book, a uh, best-selling author of the brand new book, The House Guest. So great to have you here. Thanks for giving us the scoop. Oh, Sarah, thank you so much for having me. It's been a joy. Yay! All right, everybody. Well, I will see you next Tuesday, except I also have a special guest for you tomorrow. So because of the holiday, we're doing a special guest tomorrow, Tracy Clark, Sue Grafton Memorial Award winning Upfront Anthony right now with her book Runner at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. tomorrow. That is Wednesday before the holiday. Uh, so I'll see you all then. And I will see you after the holiday uh, on next Tuesday. Everyone have a safe and wonderful holiday. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Ella saying thank you. Leslie saying thank you. You guys are the best. I love my mystery and thriller fam. 
Emily, thank you so much for joining us. And thank and you. Happy Cup Day. Oh, thanks so much. Bye, everybody. See you next time.